Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena. Welcome back to the channel. It has been a very long time since I've said that and it feels so good to be back. School is officially done, exams are over and I'm ready to get going again in astrophotography. As many of you know, I'm moving away to university in September and astrophotography has become such a big part of my life. I can't just put it to the side, I have to bring it with me. This video is all about the portable rig that I am currently building to take up with me and hopefully it'll inspire you guys to build your own portable rig if travel astrophotography is something that you're really interested in. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's strip down the rig one by one and show you what I'm bringing with me. The first piece of equipment I was inspired to purchase by the incredible landscape astrophotographer Alan Wallace over here on YouTube and that is the Benro Match 3 tripod. Now what's so special about this tripod is its weight. It weighs 2 kilograms but it can take 16 kilograms and that's due to the fact that it is constructed with carbon fibre materials which makes it really lightweight to carry around. It's perfect for folding up and slotting into the side of a backpack and it holds the Star Adventurer really well. It's like it was made for this trucker. The Star Adventurer has a bubble level to make sure you are on level ground, but the Benro Match 3 also has one of its own for extra stability. The next piece of equipment in the portable kit that I'm taking is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. This is the OG version. They're now selling the 2i with Wi-Fi, which I don't see a need for for what I'm doing currently, but it may be something that I consider upgrading to in the future. If you're new to Star Trackers, they're essentially extremely miniature versions of the equatorial mounts that you see carrying big telescopes. It's built in the same way and it's built to counteract the rotation of the Earth to allow us to take long exposure images of the night sky without star trails. It has a payload capacity of five kilograms and honestly, I'd recommend if you're really considering investing in one of these to purchase the Pro Pack as it has so many extra bits and bobs that I feel like you'd have to purchase in the long run anyway to get the most out of it. The Pro Pack includes the actual mount and the wedge, a ball head adapter, a counterweight, a one kilogram counterweight and a counterweight shaft, an L bracket and an illuminated polar scope. So plenty to get you started. All of this equipment fits nicely into the Shimoda Explore backpack that I'm currently using to transport all of my equipment and I think I will be using for many, many years to come. But if you're purchasing the Pro Pack, it already comes with all of the specialised cutout styrofoam for all of the equipment and that's easy enough to extract and put into any kind of shoulder bag to carry around. Now for the second half of the rig, which is the imaging half. And this connects to the top of the L bracket provided with the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro Pack with a 210 William Optics dovetail. This dovetail is the one that you can see at the bottom of the rig here, and it's a dual Vixen style Arca Swiss dovetail plate. The ring set that's holding the equipment together is a really, really innovative 3D printed ring system from Astrodymium. It can hold a ZWO EAF autofocuser. It also has space for a guide scope, the ASI Air, and obviously it's made specifically to hold the Samyang 135mm lens. I've attached the ZWO ASI Air and the Pegasus Astro Dewzap controller to the Astrodymium ring system with Velcro. It was really simple to attach to the mounting plate and the bracket at the top allows for really easy installation of a guide scope and I'm just using the ZWO mini guide scope and 120mm guide camera that I use with any other rig that I'm building. The ring system means that you can remove or install the lens without having to touch the camera first. As well as this, the big thumb screws mean that you don't require any tools to loosen or tighten the ring system either. So it's all really, really easy to use. And I think that was the main sort of factor that I was considering with this rig. So the equipment that the ring system is holding is, as I mentioned earlier, the Samyang 135mm f2 lens. Now this lens wasn't specifically designed for astrophotography but it is really well known within the astrophotography community for its fast optics. 
Although shooting through a wide open aperture may sound appealing at f2, I always like to stop down to 2.8 or even sometimes 4 depending on the darkness level of the skies that I'm in to retain the sharpness. You are therefore sacrificing the amount of light that the lens is able to capture but if you're in a dark sky location this is not going to be affected. Another advantage of this lens having such great light gathering power is the need for shorter exposures. If the lens is able to capture large amounts of light, you're not gonna need to expose for long periods of time to make up for the signal that's being lost. This can mean that tracking is more forgiving, for example, on the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, as if you're using shorter exposures, there's less demand on the tracking system to track the sky for long periods of time, and therefore this minimizes the likelihood of stars trailing in your photos. The Samyang 135mm that I've got at the moment has the Canon EF adapter on the end of it and with this EF adapter it weighs 830 grams. The main thing I love about using deep sky rigs, portable deep sky rigs such as this, is being able to effectively use lenses instead of telescopes. I was far into my astrophotography journey before I found out that it was possible to attach deep sky cameras onto the back of lenses and it really does change the game. Don't get me wrong, you can still attach a normal DSLR camera to the back of a lens such as this and have it as a portable rig but I just so happen to have a dedicated astronomy camera with me today. A simple way to attach a deep sky camera to a lens is by using a ZWO filter drawer for Canon lenses and this also has the added benefit of allowing you to slot in a 2 inch filter. I currently have a 2 inch UV IR filter in there at the moment to prevent and minimise star bloating. On the back of the lens, the deep sky imaging camera that I have been referring to is the ZWO2600 MC Pro. It has an APS-C sized sensor, which is really hard to say, and this sensor is 16 bit. So the bit depth readout of a camera refers to how much information your camera can store in each colour channel. And essentially what that means is if you've got a high bit depth, you'll expect to see a smoother transition of colours in the images. I've only taken one image so far with the camera that I'm reviewing currently and because Scotland is in twilight right now, I can't take any images, which is so frustrating. But in the first imaging session I used with the camera, I photographed the comet and this smooth transition of colours and the overall quality of the image was really, really apparent. I've spoken about the camera and lens a lot and if you've ever got two pieces of equipment like that and you want to figure out the field of view, figure out how a certain target is going to look or frame up in a certain way, a really good website to use is Telescopius. You can put in all the details of the camera and the focal length of the lens and it will give you the field of view that you should expect to see on the night of imaging. And this just allows for some extra forward planning which makes imaging sessions run a lot smoother, trust me. The second piece of kit from ZWO is the ASI Air Mini and I'm totally new to the ASI Air line and I feel like I've discovered something incredible. I feel like I should have been using these a long, long time ago. For those who don't know, on a deep sky imaging session you'd normally have a laptop out connected to the rig in the garden to control all of the different individual pieces of software. It's the brain of the rig, if you like, and the ASI Air Mini is a smaller, but definitely more powerful brain of this rig. Through connecting the Air to the free app on a digital device such as a smartphone or a tablet, you can control everything. You can control the telescope, the mount, the autofocus, the filter wheel, the guiding, anything you can think of, this thing can control and it's got it sussed for you. The ease of use has been absolutely super. When you open the app, you get on-screen instructions that guide you through the whole user interface in seconds. There was no need for me to look at any extra videos, tutorials, instructions. Everything that I learned, I learned as soon as I opened the app. Cameras like these produce very hefty image files as well. They're very large color image files, and even more so if you're shooting with a mono camera. And the Air doesn't have any problem downloading these super quickly. Within seconds of taking the photo, you'll be able to see it on the screen. 
Now, the main thing I love about the Air is that it makes astrophotography accessible to lots of different types of people. For example, if you're not able to stay out in the garden in the cold on a winter's night for long periods of time, you can do astrophotography from in the house. You can take your phone in, it will hold the Wi-Fi connection to the ASI Air and you can run your imaging session from the warmth of your home. The final pieces of equipment today could be argued to be one of the most important the smallest but one of the most important as if you forget these your imaging session can easily be ruined and that is dew heaters. Now I've got two dew heaters on the system at the moment from W and W Astro, a smaller one around the guide scope and a bigger one around the lens. These are both controlled by the Pegasus Astro dew zap controller and you can manually control the temperature on this box through the knobs at the bottom. That was definitely a speed run through of the equipment that I'm going to be taking with me to university. I'm so lucky that I'm able to do this and I'm so grateful that you guys are going to be able to come with me and join me on the big adventure that is very, very new, but very, very exciting. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and tuning in once again. I really hope you got something out of the video and that you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one, but until then, clear skies.